the rest of her story. Heather, it is great to see you. We're so happy that you're feeling better. Your story is incredible and you look great, but I know that that belies what you've just lived through. And so, so let's just start at the beginning, Heather, and just tell us that this dinner party that you went to on a Thursday night in Westport. Now, when you look back at that event, because you got sick and so many people from that that dinner got sick and there's so much question about social distancing. Was there anything unusual or anything that should have been done differently about that party? No, it was just a simple party. You know, there wasn't that many people there. It was nothing out of the ordinary. And um, there was multiple parties after that, by the way, with hundreds and hundreds of people on Thursday and, and, and then on, I mean, on Friday and Saturday, um, nobody was social distancing. And even at the party that I went to, by the way, people were not hugging and were already thinking about this a little bit. But, um, you know, there, there were maybe 50 people were at the, at the party that I was at. Um, no, it's and, such a, you know, I mean, it's such a <laughs> cautionary tale for everybody because if it can happen there, it can happen everywhere. So let's talk about what your symptoms were. So, so after that, you... You are, as we've said, a very healthy woman. You're a long distance runner, a marathon runner. So a few days later, just describe what your symptoms were over the course of the next week. Right, so it started with a fever. Um, and I thought, you know, maybe I'm getting the flu, even though I had the flu, a flu shot. Um, and, you know, I, um, and I didn't know that anybody else, um, of the people that I had been with were, were not feeling well. So I thought maybe I had the flu I took you know, some, some Advil and the fever went away because for the first few days when you get sick, it seems to come, fever seems to come at night and then in the morning it goes away. Um, and then in the morning it was gone and then the fever came back, but then it was this relentless fever, um, that just continued. And, um, I did have a, my chest bone, but I didn't realize it was shortness of breath because it just seemed that I was breathing differently. I kept my breath very um, short breath, just to not get that pain in my chest bone. Um, and then very the symptoms so you were, just- So you were having like a shallowness of breath. And then yes. it got progressively worse. So your fever didn't go away. Yes. You had all of these aches. You started having the in intestinal symptoms. And what was the yes. point? I and mean, we're seeing a picture of you looking desperate in the hospital right now and looking so sick. What was the point at yes. which you realized you had to go to the hospital? I mean, I was very fortunate because um, I was given the number to Yale um, COVID. They had a hotline and they had nurse practitioners that were calling and checking in on me and um, every day, actually. So um, they had actually they were the ones that recommended that I got tested because of the exposure and because of my fever. Um, the test results took five days, which is just out unbelievable. Um, and every day they checked in and. Um, when one of the nurse practitioners called me, she didn't like the way I sounded. And then she had a doctor come on the phone and they asked me to take a breath. And when I did, I coughed very quickly. And so they recommended that I um, come to the hospital right away. Um, so, and, you know, I had other so things like, I, I, you know, but they had, you know, they, they were like, do you have a sore throat or do you have a runny nose? I didn't have those symptoms. Um, oh. So, sorry. What was and, and so you spent nine days in the hospital yes. and those pictures of you look horrible. I mean, frankly, you look so sick. Was, and were there horrible. moments where, where you wondered if you would survive this? Yeah, because it just kept getting worse. You know, I was vomiting. I mean, to be vomiting in your bed and in a pan, it's, it's a horrible feeling. I had migraines. You lose your taste, you lose your smell. Um, I ended up developing hepatitis. Um, there was a day where they told me they may have to do a spinal tap. They were concerned about me developing meningitis. Actually, that was one week ago today. Um, it was terrifying. And you just don't know if you're going to be that person. And I'm 42. I'm a nutritionist. Um, I've dedicated my entire life to being healthy. I've run 15 marathons. And so for, I, I was thinking, I'm going to be that one. I'm going to be that one that this is, this is taking down. And mm -hmm. I just felt like I was, I was completely out of my body. Was, it was taking over my body. I had a rash all over my body, like every area of my body, this disease had taken over and mm -hmm. I wasn't getting better. And I was fortunate enough to be, you know, because I was at Yale, 
um, and I was part of their uh, the trial at Yale. I was I was placed on the hydroxychloroquine, and that's you know, interesting. I, so I, you I, were able to get that. You were able to get that sort of experimental drug. And do yeah. you think that that changed the course of your recovery? I do because when I, I had a five day treatment, and I believe that was when it started to turn for me. You know, that was when you know the, it's possible that the fever um, stopped and. Um, it's interesting when the fever stopped, the migraines started, and I'm not someone who gets migraines, um, mm -hmm. and they can only give you a certain amount of Advil. They're not giving Advil because Advil can aggravate it. So yeah. um, it's hard. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, Heather, I mean, I know that we only have 10 seconds left, and I know that you want to thank your doctors. And one interesting thing for people to, to know is that you were alone for most of the time in the hospital room because they would appear via screen. You know, they're trying to protect themselves. Yeah. And so sometimes you would only deal with people in this kind of futuristic way. But in the final 10 seconds, what do you want us to know about your care there? My care was amazing. My nurses, um, I had the most amazing, amazing nurses. And I'm so grateful to the care from my nurses and my doctors. They put themselves on the line. And thank you so much to Gail for your amazing care and for um, for saving my life, truly. I'm forever well, grateful. And well, Heather, also thank that, you. I let me thank get you. through this as a country. Yeah. So. That's um, a good message. And yeah. thank you for sharing your story. That picture of you with your kids where it says coronavirus survivor and take is um, just take incredible. This, take the seriously. Stay home, isolate, listen.